been tasked with giving you a, a very brief presentation about the progress challenges and, of course, the changing political times. Uh, good news in my presentation, I speak very fast like a New Yorker, like Alan, but you don't have to take any notes. All of this will be videotaped, and it's really meant to just give you kind of a, a wide brush stroke of what's happened during this last year. Uh, thanks to Jessica, we have our accomplishments updated on this graphic, but I'm not going to go through all the little points. I'm just going to give you highlights in the forthcoming slides. But before I start, it's very important to me and to ADAO and for those of you here to recognize uh, Andy Schneider, who passed away in February. We will be honoring him tonight. But many of our accomplishments we really owe to the media and the journalists who have dug deep and hold our lawmakers accountable. Well, it just happened that last month that CDC actually confirmed what we've always known, that mesothelium rates are still on the rise. Dr. Lim will give you more information. This slide is really important. It's from Brazil. When we went down to Brazil for Fernando's conference where the polluter actually paid, we took photographs of our Brazilian asbestos victims. And I think it's really important we recognize that we are one. The polluter pays, well, it worked in, in the United States. The Washington Attorney General recognized ADO's leadership, and we were awarded a restitution award so that we can develop a leading educational website for the state of Washington, United States, and hopefully it'll be used around the world. This was amazing. President Obama was the first sitting president to recognize asbestos as a carcinogen. He did that when he was signing the Tosca reform into law. Barbara Boxer still worked hard. She actually introduced the ban asbestos, Alan Reinstein ban asbestos bill, which would eliminate the evaluation of the chemical. Right now we're sitting where EPA did re recognize that um, asbestos is a problem. It's a top 10, but they're going to spend three to five years evaluating asbestos. But you can see Barry Castleman continues and others come to the Hill. We did our 11th, um, our 10th uh, congressional staff briefing, and we, s and we also packed those with meetings. And we won. We won in December. I mean, we should applaud this. Through the help of all of you and our colleagues around the world, the EPA did recognize and listed asbestos as one of the top 10 chemicals. So we did win. And Canada won too. And you're going to hear more for Canadian experts later on, but it's impressive because North America really comes together as one. Um, it was just last week the Senate finally passed our 13th annual Asbestos Awareness Week resolution. This is important. It goes in the congressional record where you can see these facts and stats and hopefully in a courtroom and maybe some of your colleagues will use this, but it also urges the Surgeon General to issue a warning. We don't always get it, but we keep trying. We've had about six Surgeon General warnings, but this is more than a peep piece of paper. So art and advocacy is where it's at. We can make things happen by blending talent and celebrities with the facts. And Jordan actually did an event in July, ded dedicated proceeds to ADO, but most importantly, it was so much fun, um, obviously in honor of his late father. And Anna Marie's family, as she mentioned, they did Rockin' for Me. So I think the community coming together is important to recognize. And of course, Heather's uh, 11th Lung Leaving Day. <laughs> so we break our work up into education, advocacy, and community. And we have over 200 people who have shared their stories from around the world with ADIO. We use those stories to make graphics for like Mesothelium Awareness Day, and Jessica helps us do that. But every single story is important, and you can see on this slide that there are 12 stories that we profiled, and you'll hear more from Mike and some of the folks in these slides later on. And as I said, we just finished Global Asbestos Awareness Week. It's no more than a week. It's a mantra for us for awareness and prevention. Okay, here's the challenges. Look at Fernanda Smirk over there. Yes, we do. We have our conference open to the public. We don't censor. We don't, uh, we don't um, deny anyone interest. And Rob Moore was able to infiltrate our conferences in 2013 and 2015. We smelled a, we smelled a messy guy when we first met him. But um, he has been outed in the UK, and he's uh, fa facing legal challenges. Um, we have work to do. The FACT Act, the Republicans just did their amazing work again. They passed a really horrible bill for asbestos victims. Uh, it will delay our compensation and delay justice is denied justice and it's important that all of you recognize that whether you're a victim or not. But these kinds of bills that the Chamber of Commerce funds and supports damage the lives of many here today but the future. 
We went to cartoons. We thought, how are we going to tell this story? So on Twitter, I found a cartoonist, happened to be from South Africa. And the biggest pushback we get now is from the chloralkaline industry. Barry's going to talk more about, but these knuckleheads actually want another exemption. They do. They, they're lobbying the EPA to think that they really have safe use. Fernanda's going to tell you more how it's not. We're going to discuss the pathways. But who on earth says that you can have safe asbestos use? I don't know anyone. So we're taking uh, some of our work to political cartoons. And yes, fake news, junk science, and a Pruitt-led EPA. We're worried. We're very, very worried. This man doesn't even believe in climate change. So we have a lot of work to do. And I'm hoping that you will work together with us. We have a declaration we're going to be circulating, and Celeste is in charge. And we'll be adding all of your signatures, those of you who are willing to sign on, to make sure that the body of our work done today can be shared in the United States and around the world. We need each of you to become connected and share and walk this journey with us. It truly is, is accurate from our perspective that sharing makes us stronger. And I really hope that you look to the left and right, you introduce yourself to your colleagues and exchange business courts, cards, because what we do at these conferences, sometimes it's more important what we do in the hallways than actually with the presentations. So thank you very much. I'm really proud that you're here to, to share this momentous day with us. And our committee has worked very hard on making this possible. If you have questions during the day, please see any of the ADO leadership up on this board and Ellen and others. We want this conference to be as spectacular for you as it has been for the last 12 years. Thank you very much.